Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 68362072 our website is www our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com our youtube channel ministry of education kaduna state our twitter handle at kaduna underscore moe or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Hello, students. You are welcome to another interesting session in the program e-learning on radio television. My name is Mrs. Comfort Bakao. I'm here to take the subject, Christian Religious Studies, CRS. Our topic for today is parental responsibility. And the parental responsibility, we are going to look at three families in the Bible. We'll be looking at the family of Eli, the family of Samuel, and the family of Asa. Before we continue, we want to ask the question, who is a parent? We say a parent could be one biologically connected to a child, either the father or the mother. It could also mean one related to a child, taking care of such a child. Relationship, either an auntie or an uncle. It could also be one adopting a child. Adopting a child means you are not the biological parent, but you take that child to be your own child. And you take responsibility for the upbringing of that child. Also, anyone who takes care of the upbringing of a child, not necessarily related to such a child in whatever way. You can take someone from your village and come and take responsibility of bringing such a one up. In that case, you are the parent or guardian at that particular time. Then we also ask, what is responsibility? Responsibility simply means to be accountable or answerable for someone or something. It could also mean a duty, obligation, or liability for which someone is held accountable. So connecting the two terms, parental responsibility, what does it mean? From the Bible, there's the divine role or duty of parents to bring up the child or children in the fear of God. And apart from discipline, parents also have the, to provide for the material, social, and spiritual needs of their children. We find out that while some parents perform this biblical injunction well, others do not. And as we look at these examples from the Bible, you're going to listen carefully, you're going to read carefully and see who are these parents from our examples that were able to perform their duties well and those who failed to pro perform their duties to their children? Okay, so we take 
our first example, the family of Eli. The example of Eli. And the story is found in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 11 to 36. Also, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 2 to 18. And lastly, 1 Samuel 4, 10 to 22. Who was Samuel? Samuel was a priest of God in Shiloh, in Israel. Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. When Eli was old, he met his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, to be priests in Israel in his place. How does the Bible describe the children of Eli? The Bible described them as worthless men. They were worthless. Their father was a priest. He is a father. But here are his children. The Bible describing them as worthless men. They also, the Bible tells us that they have no regard. They had no regard for God. They treated the sacrifices or the offerings of the Lord with contempt. That is, they had no respect for the sacrifices. We say a priest. Who is a priest? A priest is one who offers services and sacrifices to God on behalf of the people and on behalf of himself. But look at these sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. No regard for the sacrifices that were brought by the people to sacrifice to the Lord. When the people will now bring the meat for the sacrifice, what do they do? The practice is that you allow the meat for the sacrifice to boil first. After all being done, the priest can take part of the meat. But these sons of Eli, they will now come with their folk, they will send their servant to bring out the meat. In fact, give us the meat raw. The people that brought the sacrifice, they will say, okay, allow it. Let the sacrifice be over, let the meat boil. After the sacrifice, you can take as much of the meat as you want. They will now insist. If you don't give us, we take the meat by force. We also see that the children of Eli, they lay with the women who came to serve at the entrance of the tent of meeting. That is, they were sleeping with the women. They were having sex with the ladies that were, service, I mean, were, were, were serving God in the temple. Lastly, they blasphemed God. To blaspheme God is to say or do things that do not bring glory to God. This are practices of the sons of Eli. We find that even in our churches, we find some men of God, they sleep with women in the temple. In our churches, we have that happening. That should not be the case. So these children of Eli, here is the behavior as the Bible described them. With their behavior, God sent warning to their father. What was the warning? God sent a man to Eli to warn him about the behavior of his sons. The man told Eli that God was going to wipe out his family in one day. The family was going to perish, all of them. And there will be no old man in the family. Everyone will be destroyed. Eli, we said, tried to speak to his sons over their sins, but he did not back his words with action. You know, parents, when you are speaking to your children, well, students, when you, our parents are speaking to us, talking to us, we know when they are serious. We know when our parents are serious. Let me just give an example. Maybe a mother who has a daughter, and the daughter will be bringing her items, gifts, wrappers, tea ingredients, and many other gifts. And the daughter is not doing any work. And the mother knows it. But she will now collect the items, and she will now say, my daughter, um, this thing that you are doing is not good. Now where do you get the money to be buying all these things for me? But she will collect the items so, and go on to use them. She would have said, my daughter, let me, I, I, I prefer to die poor than to collect things. I don't know where you are getting it. I will not collect. The daughter will not go and bring those items again to her. But because the daughter knows that the mother is not serious, she will continue with what she's doing. Whether it's prostitution or whatever, she's, wherever she's getting the money, she will go ahead and do it because she knows that her mother is not serious in her warning. So for Eli talking to his sons, the sons, maybe they knew that the father was not serious. So they continued in their behavior. They refused to repent and turn away 
on the path of, to the path of righteousness. In that house, or in the house of Eli, God was preparing young Samuel to succeed Eli. Because you see that the sons of Eli, they are not good. So, uh, as a little boy, Samuel was ministering to the Lord in Eli's house. God revealed himself to young Samuel, telling him all that he was going to do to the house of Eli because of the sins of Hophni and Phinehas. And in response to this warning that God sent to Eli through young Samuel, Eli could only make a defeatist comment. It is the Lord. Let him do whatever seems good to him. You expect that somewhere, I mean, Eli as a father would now go on to intercede, to plead on God, I mean, on the behalf of his children. Please, God, have mercy on this, my children. Show us mercy. But he just said, eh, it is the Lord. Let God do whatever he wants. So we see the punishment of God, I mean, of God on the children of Eli for their behavior. There was war between Israel and their long-term enemy, the Philistines. Israel was defeated. 3,000 soldiers, foot soldiers, died in that battle. We were killed. And the surviving soldiers, they ran home to back to Israel on food that day. And they told the news to Eli. Your two sons have been killed in the war. And the ark of God has been taken away. The ark of God symbolizes the presence of God with the people of Israel. And for the ark to be captured, to be taken away, it meant <coughs> that God's presence had been taken away from Israel. When Eli had the news, he fell down, broke his neck, and died instantly. Phinehas' wife, who was pregnant then, on hearing the news, started labor and gave birth to a son. She gave him the name Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed from Israel. And soon after that, she also died. So you will see that the whole of Eli's family was wiped out in one day, just as the Lord had said. And the priesthood went to Samuel, who had been ministering to the Lord under Eli. We now look at the example of the family of Samuel. We've just said that Samuel was a young man growing under Eli, the priest in Shiloh. Immediately after the death of Eli, Samuel was made the ruler in Israel. You will see that up until now we've not mentioned king because since the time the children of Israel left the prom I mean Egypt, traveled in the wilderness, Settled in the promise, they did not have a king. God will just brought, I mean, bring up people or men that will just lead them in wars, minister to him through uh, sacrifices and all. But they did not have a king up until this point. Okay, so when Samuel became old, who were the sons of Samuel? The sons of Samuel were Joel and Abijah. When Samuel, like Eli, was growing old, he met his two sons. Joel and Abijah to be judges in Israel and they judge from a town called Beersheba or Beersheba of the sons of Samuel, the sins of Samuel's sons. Samuel's sons did not follow the good example of their father. They took bribes and they perverted justice. When people will now bring to them cases, you know, judges, you know, our law courts, they bring cases for them to judge. The children of Samuel, the person that may be guilty, may go at the background, give them some money, and when they come to judge the case, they will now say the one that is guilty is the innocent one. And the innocent one, they will now say he's the one guilty. And they will punish him or send him to prison. So such was the practice of the sons of Samuel. 
And what was the result again of the sins of Samuel's children? The sons of Samuel were rejected as just judges by the people of Israel. All of the people, I mean the elders in Israel, they gathered themselves. They came to Samuel, their father, and said, we don't like your children. We don't want them to judge us. They are not following your example, so we don't want them. How will you or how will your parents feel, my students, if people around you, the neighborhood will come and say, we don't like you. I mean, we don't like your children. The behavior of your children is not good. So we want, we, no parent will be happy to hear such bad reports about his children. So the second point, Israel for the first time demanded a king, having lost confidence in the sons of Samuel, that is Joel and Abijah. Remember, students, I said, oh, from the time the children of Israel left Egypt, throughout their journey in the wilderness, and when they settled down in the promised land, they did not have kings. God was their king. God was the one that will lead them into battles. He will choose people, I mean leaders, just leaders, to be their priests. And to, but because of the sins of the sons of Samuel, for the very first time, the children of Israel demanded for a king. Samuel was not happy about this. He reported the matter to God. And God said what? Listen to them. The people are not rejecting you as king, but they are rejecting me. Yes, we say Israel asking for king, for a king, was the beginning of the introduction of kingship to the nation of Israel. Before now, Israel did not have a king. God was their king. But now, the original focus, which was on God as their king, has now shifted to earthly kings. Yes, they came, they came and said, give us kings. Let us be like other nations. We want to have a king that will go before us, will take us towards, bring us in, and all. But your children, Samuel, we don't want them. So God said to Samuel, give them, give them it. But warn them, because these kings that they are asking for, tell them the behavior of the king, they will subject you to so many hardships in the land. The people said, yes, we prefer that, but we don't want your children. Okay, the last example that we have, we are taking, is the family of Asa. The who was Asa? Asa was a king in Judah, in the southern kingdom. Remember, we said decisions of Solomon. We said because of some unwise decisions he took during the time of his son, Rehoboam, the kingdom of Israel was divided into two, the southern and the northern kingdom. So this Asa was king in Judah in, at the southern part. He reigned for 41 years. The Bible tells us that Asa was the son of Abijam, who ruled before him. The Bible describes Asa's, Asa's father as one of the worst kings Judah had. Yes, you remember we are looking at parental responsibility. And for Asa, his father, the Bible described him as one of the worst kings that ruled. But then Asa rejected his father's bad example. He succeeded his father and did what was right in God's sight or in the eyes of God. His achievements. What were those things that he did that were right in the eyes of God? His achievements and successes. Number one, he put away the male cult prostitutes out of the land of Judah. There was the practice where the, this man would I mean, sleep with the women in town or in the temple. He put all of those out of the land of Judah. He removed all the idols that his father had made. He also removed his mother, that is Maaka, from her position as queen mother because she made an image of Asherah, it was a god. When he discovered that his mother was worshipping an idol, he did not mind that she was his mother. All he knew, wanted was that God's name will be glorified in Israel or in Judah. So he removed her from that position. It was an exalted position of a woman, for a woman. But he went ahead to do that. He also abolished idolatry and instituted reforms in the temple. His father before him, who was described as the worst king, one of the worst kings in Judah 
had brought many idols in the land, in the temple. You remember the temple of Solomon? Solomon built a magnificent temple for the Lord. But Abijam, the father of Asa, brought idols into that temple. So when Asa became king, he removed all these idols as way of reforms in the land. And we said he also removed from the temple all the Canaanite practices and called objects. So this is Asa, king of uh, Judah. He did what was right in God's sight. Then we look at his son. Who was his son? Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa. Asa was succeeded by, I mean, as king by his son Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign in Israel or in Judah. And we say that unlike the sons of Eli and Samuel, Jehoshaphat was able to follow the good example of his father Asa. Not the good example that he saw from his father. Unlike the children of Eli, we said, and Samuel, their fathers they were good people, but then they went wayward. Jehoshaphat watched his father, did what was right in God's sight, as the Bible says. He continued with the reforms that his father started, flushing out all the remnants of the male prostitute or prostitution and the activities began by his father. Most importantly, he tried to make peace with the northern kingdom, the sister kingdom of Judah. He made peace with them. Up until now, there was enmity, problems between the two of them. So that was Jehoshaphat. What are the lessons that we can learn from this topic? Parental responsibility. So many lessons. Number one, we are saying parents are charged with the great responsibility of bringing up their children to fear God. Proper upbringing of children brings glory to God and the family, but failure brings shame. Parents serving as ministers or in whatever capacity should not neglect their responsibility at home, especially in supervising and training their children. Parents are under, uh, under divine obligation to watch over the physical, material, moral, and spiritual welfare of their children. And parents who refuse to advise their children or children who refuse to take instructions, when the result comes, the whole family will suffer. We say, advice alone to children is not usually enough. Parents should back it up with actions. You remember in the story of uh, Eli, he called his children. What is this that I'm hearing from you? He did not take action. He did not speak to them. Let the children know that he was serious. So as parents, we should back what we say to our children with action. We said no, another point is that God does not bring calamity to people without false warning those concerned. Before God will bring any punishment on you, he would have warned you, he would have sent warnings to you. It is when you refuse to heed to the warning that the calamity will come. And we see that the sun, the sin of one man can affect many. For example, many soldiers died in war because of the sins of the sons of Eli. 30,000 soldiers died in one day, along with this Hophni and Phinehas, and even Eli, the priest himself, died that day. So you see that as we looked at in making decisions, the decisions we make, they don't just affect us, but they affect others also around us. So we should be careful in the decisions we make. And then when we sin, the glory of, of God departs from us. You remember this is the, the name that Phinehas, Phinehas' wife gave to the son, Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God was captured in the war with the Philistines. And so when we sin in our lives, we see that God's name is dishonored. God is not glorified. And then God can take away leadership or priesthood or any privilege from us if we continue to sin. Whatever privilege you are enjoying today, don't think that you can just continue in it and continue to do, I mean, commit sin. God can remove that privilege from you if you continue. So, my dear students, before I go, I want to give you assignments on the topic parental responsibility. Number one, 1A. Describe the behavior of the sons of Eli and Samuel. Describe fully. Hmm? I want you to fully describe their behavior. Number two, number one B, give two reasons why parents could be held accountable for the behavior of their children. 
parents, how can they be held responsible? Why should they be held responsible for the behavior of their children? Number two question, mention any four lessons you have learned from the topic parental responsibility. And number three question, describe fully parental responsibility as practice in your home. I take up the assignment again. Number one A, describe the behavior of the sons of Eli and Samuel. Number one B, give two reasons why parents could be held accountable for the behavior of their children. Number two assignment, mention any four lessons you have learned from the topic parental responsibility. And number three, <clears throat> describe fully parental responsibility as practiced in your home. The examples we've looked at, they are in the Bible. This one, your own home. What is happening in your own home? You should be able to say it, I mean, describe it fully. So you can send your answers to this assignment, to this number. 080-2266-7567. I'll take the number again. 080-2266-7567. My name is Mrs. Comfort Bakau. I remain your CRS teacher. So until we meet again, remain blessed.